Welcome back to another edition of Research Fantasy Presents, our PGA DFS picks for the PGA Championship. Should be a fun event. It will be the last PGA Millionaire Maker of the calendar year and of the season for the PGA. It sets up rather interestingly, as always in weeks like this, roster construction is not exactly too difficult I really haven't decided how I want to do this video, which is probably something I should have done before sitting down to do this video, but that's not really my style. Um, last week, all of our golfers made the cut, so I was really excited about that. We'll see if anyone gets that one. Um, I think they all tied for 17 or better. Maybe Berger might have been in the next tier down. I'm not quite sure. Um... This week, we know Rory is going to be an incredibly popular play. Rory's course history has been spectacular here. Um, I'm going to leave him off the video just because it's going to it's going to be such a chalky play. And if you've watched the videos and if you've read our content, we were on him heavy last week with the T5. We were on him heavy the week before at the British Open with the T4. This weekend, I plan on being underweight on Rory. I expect him, I, I would, depending on the max entries allowed in tournaments, I would not be shocked to see him between 30 and 40% owned. This coming from two straight weeks where you were able to get him at 6 and 9% respectively. So, even though <coughs> the course history has been there, even though he's playing well, Basically, he's going to have to finish super duper high based on his ownership. And you're going to have to hit everything else out of the park for your lineups to really make any movement. I'd prefer to look at a few guys outside his price range or, or around his price range and a few guys below and really begin our focus there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to break down my top four golfers based on our model then I'm going to give you one guy to kind of keep an eye out for. It might be an overreaction, but we'll see. This is an interesting cheap play. I don't know how much ownership he will carry, but uh, could be a strong differentiator in your lineups. Let's get things started off with Hideki Matsuyama. 16-9 on Fantasy Draft, 8,800 on FanDuel, 10-5 on DraftKings. Matsuyama put on a clinic down the stretch last week. And it's no shock, especially when you're using 12-round uh, data, that Matsuyama would profile this well. Matsuyama plays well in uh, these majors. If he's not going to win it, I think a top 5-7 to seven is probably pretty likely. But with him rolling the way he is, it wouldn't be shocking to see him dominate here. He has all the tools, 2nd in par 5 scoring, 3rd in T to green, uh, everything kind of sticks out, has some solid finishes here in the past as well, and I'm a big believer in recent form, and he has some of the best recent form coming into this event. Makes a great pivot off of that Jordan, or off of that Rory McIlroy price. Love some Hideki Matsuyama this week. Paul Casey is a guy who probably won't rival Rory in ownership, but he himself could have anywhere from 22 to 30 percent ownership. 14-7 fantasy draft, 7600 FanDuel, 7800 on DraftKings. Fifth in par four scoring, and there are eight between 400 and 500 here where he has done extremely well. Second in bogey avoidance, which tends to turn up on most courses as being a positive indicator, and I think in these. Uh, majors it can be a huge factor as well the benefit for a lot of these guys is that they can drive the ball like that's all we hear about all week is drive the ball off the tee tee to green but if you can get someone in there who's going to be able to avoid bogeys as well that's a big deal because the less the more bo bogeys avoided the more potential birdies and pars Obviously, we want the birdies. There is definitely a lopsidedness to how DraftKings in specific scores birdies versus bogeys. 
So we want someone like Casey coming off a top 10 at this event last year. Looked good last week. No reason to not look his direction again this week. Coming in at number three, Jason Day, 16-5 fantasy draft, 9,100 FanDuel, 10-4 DraftKings. Everyone talks about how Rory is the monster at this course, but if you look at the last five years, aside from the fact that Day does not have two wins, only one, Day profiles exactly the same as Rory. In terms of finishes. Aside from missing the cut, he has four subsequent top 15 finishes, including a second place last year, first place the year before that. Fifth in bogey or better percentage in the last 12 rounds, playing very solid golf, has had a rough year on the course because of extenuating circumstances with his family. He looks like he's putting things together of the bunch. 10K and above. Day, in my opinion, could be the lowest owned because people are going to still be on speed for what he is. They're going to be on Rory because of what he's done here. They're going to be on Hideki because he's coming off the win. And I think Jason Day just ends up being the leftover guy who people aren't ready to forgive because he hasn't really busted through with that monster finish yet. I could see it happening here. Lastly, Tony Finau. 13-1 13-1 fantasy draft, 7K FanDuel, 7K draft Kings. I mean, quite honestly, you know, this is this is going to be another highly owned play. First in par 5 scoring, third in bogey avoidance, and off the tee in his last 12 rounds. Cannot putt really well. Not Jason Kokrak bad, but still a little bit of a struggle for him. Hangs around. Has been, you know, a guy that a lot of the experts have really had on the tip of their tongue basically saying this is going to be the time he's going to be able to turn things on and really uh, get the job done. I'm talking about 2017. He's going to finish one of these. You don't really look at him and say he's the guy who's finishing a major, but you can't rule it out at the same time. Worth noting that Charlie Hoffman, who comes in at sixth on our list, Um, Top 7 in 5 of our 6 remaining stats, including 1st in Bergy or better percentage, and 2nd in par 4 scoring. The only thing lower than that, and it was like 33, was bogey avoidance. One guy I wanted to specifically point out is Jonathan Vegas. So Vegas wins the RBC. That was a scoring fest. Um, Comes back to the Bridgestone. Finishes well over the weekend. Has another solid showing there. Finished 22nd here last year. My curiosity is we've t- we've seen guys like David Lingmurth and David Hearn who play better in that June-July cycle in the summer. We see guys who just do a little bit better at specific chunks of the tour. Could this be... A chunk of the tour that Jonathan Vegas just really excels at. I think what you're getting with Vegas at 6,500 is a ton of risk because he's been a cut monster in the negative way. But if it's true that he's cycling right now and this is a point where he's actually playing extremely solid golf, a top 25 from $6,500 is probably going to put you in the position to win some pretty big money. I don't think he'll be very highly owned. I don't think that this is a week that you really need to dip below that 7K range to build solid lineups, which only adds to my curiosity on Vegas because it really opens up the differentiation and lineup construction. People want golfers in their lineup that they've heard of. And for 3K, 300 more, Zach Johnson's probably going to dominate that ownership off of Jonathan Vegas. And Zach Johnson doesn't, he comes in ranked 20th in our rankings Vegas at 14 I'm gonna take some shots on him I could be completely wrong this week but he's someone I'm looking at who's been trending in the right direction thanks for watching hope you win some money this week let me know if you do Um, please subscribe to our YouTube channel below we're closing in on 500 subscribers so I'll better do some giveaways I have some stuff put away I'll have to dig it out 
Uh, nothing over the top, but still some pretty cool items. I want to just say thanks to everyone who got us here. Check us out at researchfantasy.com. Like us on Facebook at Research Fantasy. Follow us on Twitter at Research and Win. And join us again tomorrow.